good evening everyone so this is our second session of ongoing rhcsa weekends english training and the agenda of today's session would be first we will cover up uh, the differences between unix linux and gnu i will give you the overview of all of these uh, like we will revise the topics that we have studied yesterday after that i will show you the installation of rhcl 9.3 in oracle virtual box because many people are asking me to show the installation in the oracle virtual box there i will cover each and everything i will explain you what are the different partitions or the mount points that we create at the time of installation so those things also i will explain there which i did not explain yesterday after that we will start using the command line interface so we will use the terminal tool there and i will tell you what is the terminal what is shell how it is different from the terminal what is shell prompt and what is the meaning of each and every parameter that is visible on the shell prompt then we will talk about the main pages that we use in linux and at the end we will talk about working with directories after that i will give you a practice exercise there are 15 16 questions which you are supposed to do at your own on your own virtual machines so this is the agenda of the today's session give me a second let me allow the people who wants to join this call okay so let me start the session with the comparison of unix linux and gnu i have already explained this in the last session but one more time i am going to explain it so what is unix unix was the operating system which was developed in assembly level language in 1969 by dennis ritchy and ken thompson and it was very bulky operating system at that time and it was not very popular in the beginning because there were lot of challenges when it was developed in the assembly level language then uh these two guys rewrote the entire operating system in the b language and after that they used the c language c language was there in the development of this unix operating system and after that it became very popular after that in 1991 linus torvald what he did what he did <coughs> with the help of this unix uh, unix operating system he developed the linux kernel so the kernel which was developed by the linus torvald it was the kernel only it was not the entire operating system meanwhile uh, richard stallman has already started developing the gnu project where he was trying to uh, create the open source operating system so what both these guys did they collaborated with each other and they took the kernel which was developed by the linus torvald and they used the utilities and the programs which were present in the gnu project and they made it a complete package and this was then released with the name as gnu it was the gnu or the linux operating system so this was the actual operating system linux is not the operating system linux with gnu is the operating system that we are using nowadays so linux is actually a kernel when it combines with the softwares and the utilities then it becomes the operating system so gnu or the linux operating system it is actually a kernel with the additional programs and the softwares and after that after that many communities came up who started developing their own flavors so if i talk about the flavors of unix there you can find linux hp unix ibm aix macintosh sun solaris 
and if i talk about the flavors of linux there you can find red hat centos fedora ubuntu open source kali there are many more so all of these are the flavors of linux and nowadays more than 100 flavors are available in the market even the android mobile phones that we are using nowadays these are based on the linux kernel so this was the development and the comparison of unix with linux and gnu now let me show you how can you do the installation in the oracle virtual box because many people were requesting for the same what is required you need to download the oracle virtual box for your host machine so you you will have to go to the oracle virtual box website and there you have to click this download virtual box 7.0 button it will redirect you to this downloads page and here you need to download the tool as per your host machine like if you are using the windows machine then you can go for this one windows hosts if you are using mac you can go for the second one if you are using linux you can go for the third one i'm using windows so i will go with the first one and it will download the exe file in my machine after that i will execute this exe file and install it you should ideally download this extension pack as well so download this one also it is for additional features now you can click on finish after that you can attach the extension pack which you have downloaded earlier actually i don't prefer it i generally use uh, vmware only but if your machine is not having good hardware resources you can go for the oracle virtual box as well it is very lighter as compared to the vmware <coughs> mm, there you will find the option to attach the extension pack mm. extension pack manager it is already attached or you can manually do it also like this after doing this you can create a new a new virtual machine go on machines click on new after that you can mention the machine name i can mention here rhl 9.3 you can select the folder where you want to create it you can select the iso image let me select the iso image which i downloaded earlier i have already downloaded the iso image type is linux version 64 bit we don't want to go for the unattended install you can skip this one now go on the hardware and here you can select the ram which you want to allot i'm going with 2 gb you can accordingly mention the number of processors you can attach the number of processors i'm using two processors here If you want to enable EFI you can enable that as well and you can select the disk uh, disk space with the help of this option after that you can click on finish and 
then you can click on start screen is already shared can you see my screen guys yes okay yes sir yes sir please wait a minute mute down okay now with the help of the arrow keys we will select the first option install rhel 9.3 press enter now the installer will start and guide you for the installation here we will repeat the same process that i shown you in the previous session <coughs> first of all we select the language english reason english india click on continue keyboard layout already selected english india we don't need to connect it to red hat language support english india local installation source already install uh, already mentioned kdump is already enabled time zone is already selected asia kolkata you can select your own time zone here software selection make sure that you use this option server with gui because in beginning we will use the gui network adapter make sure that this option is enabled now we will go to this option installation destination here either you can go for the automatic option or if you want to create the partitions manually you can go for the custom option select custom click on done and then you can manually create the mount points or the partitions in the previous session i shown you how can you create them automatically but this time i will show you how can you create these mount points manually you have to click this plus sign and you have to select slash boot first slash boot contains the booting files so you can mention its size as 1024 mb 1 gb is more than enough for the boot partition after that click on the plus sign again and you can select swap what is swap 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 partition acts as a virtual memory in case your ram becomes occupied so swap will start using uh, it will behave like the virtual memory in case if ram is occupied so it works on the concept of paging and it allows you to better utilize the resources what should be the ideal size for the swap partition it should be always equal to the size of your ram or it may be twice the size of your ram or it may be half of the size of the ram so it can vary from half of the size of the ram to the twice of the size of the ram but ideally it should be always equal to the size of the ram that you are using in your machine so this question might be asked uh, by someone in the interview what should be the ideal size for the swap partition it should always be equal to the size of your ram present in the machine or it may be twice if you want like there are certain servers where we need high swap space so there we can make it twice of the size of the ram so we are using 2 gb ram here so i will mention the size as 2 gb after that again we will click on this plus sign and 
we will select root here this slash is known as root and 17 GB is remaining so I will put 17,000 here in MBs so these three partitions are required to install the RHEL 9 or RHEL 8 root boot and swap these are the three mandatory partitions that we create at the time of installation your machine can boot up or can work without swap partition also but ideally you should create it root boot and swap these three partitions are very important so we have created root we have created boot we have created swap all three partitions we have created and we are using the LVM here we uh, we are using the concept of LVM the boot partition is on the uh, the boot uh, sorry the boot mount point is on the standard partition while root and swap are on LVM what is LVM you don't need to worry about it I will cover it when I will start the storage management so LVM is you can say it is a uh, uh, virtual concept which helps you to reduce the size of the disk that you are using on the go you can easily reduce or expand the size of the disk or the partition that you are using to store the data so we are creating this on LVM while the boot is on the standard partition click on done then we will click on accept changes after that we will go to the user settings and define the root password here let me mention the password as red hat and here I am allowing the root user to log in with the password through SSH. Generally this option is by default disabled but we are doing it for the learning purpose we can enable it. We can create the normal user account also. I am going to create the account for me. Username would be Vikas Nehra. And I please please Rajesh mute. Karo. and I will set the password also click on done and then I can click on the begin installation now our machine would be ready within 10 to 15 minutes and we can start using our machine this time I have shown you the process of creating the partitions or the mount points at the time of installation in the last session I shown you how can you create them automatically but this time I shown the entire process manually now we can connect to this machine through SSH once our machine is ready now let me take you to VMware we, where we already have our machine present this is the machine which we deployed yesterday let me power on this machine or I can restore it from the snapshot and I will log in into this machine through SSH Let me check the IP address first. I'm using the DHCP, so IP address might get changed. Uh, it is 192.168.229.128. I will click on SSH, mention the IP address here username is Vikas Nehra and click on OK we are able to log in in our machine from the mobile X term you can have a look at this so this is the terminal tool that we are using here to remotely log in into our machine by using the SSH service SSH is secure shell secure shell means 
it is a protocol which is allowing us to connect to our machine by using port number 22 ssh port number is 22 it is a service and why we are able to log in because it is allowing the traffic from port number 22 and there is a service running in the system let me show you the service as well system ctl this is the service open sss server it is running in the system because of this service we are allowed to log in into machine from port number 22 you don't need to worry about it i will cover everything in detail in the upcoming sessions about the services and the ports so this is the terminal tool that we are using here to log in in the machine now what should be the first step the first step would be to manage the machine from the command line interface this terminal is the CLI it is the command line interface we are not using GUI here we will perform the tasks only using the command line interface we are not going to use GUI in this training but if you want you can validate the tasks that you have performed from the CLI by using the GUI so that's why I selected the server with GUI option because I want that I can validate whether the, whether the task was performed successfully or not so you can validate that from the graphical user interface so this is the shell where we are firing the commands so shell is different from the terminal both are different shell is different terminal is different so in order to use the command line interface we require a command line tool like mobile xterm or we can use putty these tools provide us the facility to log in in the machine remotely through ssh but this tool or the terminal it is not the shell so what is shell shell is the program which is loaded on this terminal this interface is shell where we are firing the commands shell is actually responsible to accept the input from the user to interpret the commands and to pass the instructions to the kernel for the task that the user wants to perform so how can we check which shell we are currently using we can use echo dollar shell command this command which will show you the name of the shell that you are using right now so this slash bin slash bash is the name of the shell it is a bash shell which we are using the full form is born again shell i will talk about it in the upcoming sessions how many shells are actually present in your system you can list that as well by running the chsh hyphen l command these are the shells which are currently available or you can execute cat etc shells command also this will also show you the same results <clears throat> so you can see that we are able to execute the commands so what is a command command is the instruction that the user is giving to the operating system there is a syntax for the command but before that let me explain the things which are present here so this is the parameters which are showing up here each parameter has its own meaning and the combination of all these parameters is called the shell prompt what do we call it shell prompt so this is the shell prompt different shells use different shell prompts if I will change the shell like if I will go to any other shell like sh you can see that the shell prompt has changed now if I will go to some other shell you can spot the differences in the shell prompt each shell shows different type of shell prompt on the terminal 
got it <coughs> now what are the things what are the parameters that are showing up here in the shell prompt this is the name of the user account from where we are currently logged in or it is the user who has actually logged in in the machine through ssh so shell prompt shows the name of the user in the beginning after that there is at the red symbol present it means whatever is mentioned before this at the red sign that is the username only after this at the red it shows us the name of the machine so local host is the name of this machine where we are currently logged in after that there is an space white space and after that it is showing up this tilt sign this means we are currently working in the home directory of the vikas nara user this sign represents the home directory and <clears throat> whatever is mentioned inside this square brackets this is the prompt shell prompt and after that this sign the dollar sign it shows uh, the user account type like if it is a normal user the dollar sign will show up here if it is the super user or the root user then there will be a hash present like this let me show you let me switch in the account of the root user i am going to switch in the account of the root user and after that i will show you the differences between the shell prompts <clears throat> now you can see that earlier i was logged in in the account of the vikas nara user which was a normal user account and because of that the dollar sign was present at the end of the shell prompt this time i switched in the account of the root user which is a super user so the hash sign is present at the end of the shell prompt so this hash sign tells us that this account is the super user account or it has the admin privileges what is the admin user admin user is the user who can do anything in the system this vikas nara user is the normal user who is allowed to perform the limited functions or the limited tasks there is a difference between the user accounts there are two categories of the user accounts that we use in linux one is the normal user other one is the super user or the root user okay now let me come back to the vikas nara user so this was the shell prompt got it okay now i will tell you what should be the syntax of running the commands on the shell there is a proper syntax of running commands like if you want to check the date and time in the system you can mention date so this date is a command or if you want to do something else like if you want to check where you are currently working you can mention pwd it will show you the present working directory location so these are the commands one word commands you can easily execute these commands on the system there are no issues in running these commands but what should be the actual syntax of the commands that you execute on linux let me tell you <coughs> there are several commands which offer many options with them so the 
correct syntax is first of all you will mention the name of the command after that you will mention hyphen if you want to use the option after hyphen you can mention the option and then you can mention the object like where you want to execute the command so this is the syntax of executing the command on a linux machine first of all you will mention the command name after that you will mention the option with hyphen sign if option is available there and after that you can mention the object name where you want to execute the command like the location of the file or directory so this is the proper syntax <coughs> Now let me show you with an example like if I want to open a file which is present in some other location. So what I will do I will use the cat command. So cat is the command. I am not using any other option. I am directly mentioning the path of the file which I want to open. Cat etc passwd. I know that I am logged in as the normal user account. So it may give me a warning but it is allowing me to log in the file uh, to open the file uh, this is the passwd file that we use in linux it keeps record of the uh, local user accounts so if you will check this is the command and this is the object means the file where want where we want to perform the operation cat is used to open the file and which file we want to open this is the file got it now what should be the first step that you will take on the command line interface what should be your first step the first step should be you should have an idea of the linux man pages you should know what are the man pages and how can you take the help from the man pages man is the command which we use to open the man pages man pages are just like the help manuals uh, suppose you purchase a product and you have no idea about the product what will you do you will go through the help manual first you will read the manual same in linux if you have no idea about any command or any file or any service what will you do you can go through the help manual so help manual facility is provided in linux and you can execute the man command to go through the help manual of any file any service or any process how can you do that let me show you suppose i want to check the details of the sshd service and this is the service sshd which i shown you uh, before some time so this is the service sshd which is allowing us to log in in the machine and i want to check what type of service it is uh, what are the things there what is the configuration file name so all the information about this service i can get from the help manual if the manual is available so what can i do i can execute the man command for the same i will mention here man and after that i will mention the service name so it will show me the help manual of the sshd service sshd is the open ssh daemon service daemon service is the service which start automatically at the start of the machine and keep running till the end after that if we scroll down we can go through the description this is the daemon program for ssh it provides the secure encrypted communication between two untrusted hosts over the insecure network it allows us to log in in our machine securely that's why we call it secure shell there are multiple options available with this we can go through this if we scroll down it will show us all the details along with the examples 
login process is shown. So all the information about this service you can get from the help manual. If you are interested in details you can go through it. There is a lot to learn. Same you can do for a file. There is a file for SSH. The name of the file is sshd underscore config. It is located in the EDC SSH directory. If you want to open the help manual of this configuration file, you can execute the man sshd underscore config command. It will open the help manual for this SSH configuration file. The name of the file is sshd underscore config. The name is open SSH daemon configuration file. And here you can go through the description. You can check the additional details. Multiple options are available here. Address family, allow agent forwarding. So all these details are available in the help manual. You can check all the things here. You can get the detailed information about the file. So what is the role of the manual? With the help of this manual, you can get the detailed information about any file or about any service. Suppose if you are not very sure about the name of the file or the service, like I don't have any idea that uh, the name of the service is SSHD. I only remember few words or a string like I remember that it is SSH something related to SSH. I do not know the exact name. So what can I do for that? And I want to check whether the manual is available or not. So what can I do? I can execute man hyphen K man hyphen K is just like apropos apropos is the command. Either we can execute man hyphen K or we can execute apropos. So we can write here SSH. We can mention the string which we want to search whether the manual for this string is available or not. So it can show you the error like this nothing appropriate. Or if we execute the apropos command apropos SSH again we can see that it is giving us the error nothing appropriate. So why it is happening either the manual is not present or the index is not updated. Let me check for some other file also like rsys log. So it is saying nothing appropriate. It means either the manual is not available or the index are not updated. So what can we do? We can update the indexing by running the man db command. Man db will update the indexes. But it requires the admin privilege. You can see that it is giving us the warning. No such file or directory. So what should we do? We should ideally switch in the account of the root user. It requires admin privileges. Let me switch in the account of the root user. Now let me check man hyphen k ssh. Again same same warning we are getting here. Apropos ssh. Again same warning we are getting here. Now we can execute man db. Once we execute the man db it will update the index cache. It will just refresh the cache and it will load all the available manuals in the system. And after that we can execute these commands again. It can take few seconds. So we have to wait.
let me check the other machine uh, the installation is completed in the oracle virtual box we can just reboot it you can have a look at this 8145 manual pages were added so the manuals were present but they were not available in the cache now we have updated the cache now we can execute these commands again let me execute man hyphen k as such so it will show us all the manual details for the file uh, for the files or for the processes where this ssh string is present in the name where this ssh is present it will show us the details of all sshd underscore config have a look at this same you will get if you execute the apropose command apropose is just like man hyphen k it is used to list all the entries which are available for the particular string one more thing uh, if you will have a look at the number here there you will find some different numbers against the names like sshd and underscore config after that 5 is mentioned after sshd 8 is mentioned so what is the meaning of these numbers here each number has it its own meaning i will tell you that give me one minute but before that let me show you how can you find the location of the main page you can execute the where is command where is command can be used to check the location so where is hyphen m i will mention here for the manual and after that i can mention the name of the command or the file whose manual i want to open so it will show us the location this is the location of the help manual of this sshd sshd underscore config let me check it this is the location of the help manual so where is command can be used to check the location of the manual got it so i was telling you hmm, that there is a number mentioned against the name what is the meaning of this number actually there are sections present in the manual if you will execute the man command for the manual this man is for opening the manual and this man is the command so we are going to open the manual for the man command that we use to open the help manual if you will go to this section it will show you a table and this table shows you the section numbers of the manual it has divided the manual into total nine sections in section one there you will find the information about the executable programs in the second one you will find the details of the system calls in the third one library calls in the fourth one special files in the fifth one file format and convention uh, conventions seven is for the miscellaneous eight is for the system administration commands and nine for the kernel uh, routines so it has divided it into nine sections so these are sections present against the name that i shown you here so it is related to the system administration number eight is mentioned if somewhere number five is mentioned it means it is related to the file if you want to open the desired section how can you do that let me show you let me open the help manual of the passwd file or the passwd command that we execute so passwd is the command which is used for uh, to set the password and this is the manual and you you can have a look at this here section 1 is open 
section one of the manual is opened but if i write here man five and then pass wd i am mentioning here number five number five means i want to open the section number five of the manual of the pass wd command this time you will see the difference it is the password file let me tell you again let me open another terminal here so that i can show you parallelly there is a difference on the second terminal i am logged in from the vikas nara user and here we are using the root user account if i execute the man command for the pass wd pass wd is the command and pass wd is the file also so this pass wd it may be either command or it may be the file what is the location of the pass wd file it is there in the etc directory this is the file so if i write here man slash etc slash pass wd it will show me the details like this but by default if i write here man pass wd it opens the first section of the manual means it is the command that we use to update the password but what happens if i write here man 5 pass wd it means this time we are opening the fifth section of the manual and it represents the password file both are different this is the command and this is the file so that's why the manuals are divided into sections i hope you might be getting it okay if you want to go through the manual of any other command which is new to you or if you have no idea about the command command is new to you what can you do you can simply mention the name of the command after mentioning man on the terminal write there man and after that you can mention the command name like uh, if i want to execute who so i will write here man who so who is the command that we use to check who is logged in in the system so i can go through the details i can also go through the options which are available along with the command because how will i know what are the other options that are available along with this command this can be known with the help of the help manual only so ideally if you are not aware of any command or any file or any service you should go through the help manual first always or if you just want to get the help uh, you can simply mention hyphen hyphen help after mentioning the command it will list the options that are available with the command so either you can open the manual and read it or you can write hyphen hyphen help after the command like if i want to execute the pass wd command but i have no idea about it i can mention here pass wd hyphen hyphen help so it will show me all the options that are available with this command and it will also print the name uh, the details about the command like what is the use of this command it prints the name of the current working directory and these are the options which are available along with this command okay now let's proceed further now we will start working with the directories So in this section we will talk about the pwd command cd command ls command mkdir command rmdir command absolute path relative path and auto path completion <clears throat> as i mentioned earlier this sign which is mentioned after the machine host name it represents the present working directory it shows us the details of the directory where we are currently working like if i want to go to the etc directory i can mention here cd slash etc so this time it will print here etc it means currently i am there in the etc directory if i will go back to the home directory of the root user i will mention here cd and 
this time it will show us the tilde sign which represents the home directory of the user from where we are currently logged in in the machine okay so the first command that i am going to teach here is the pwd command pwd command represents the present working directory present working directory means it shows us the location where we are currently working let me execute the pwd command where we are currently working right now so we are working in the slash root directory slash root directory is the home directory of the root user actually there is the complete directory tree let me show you if i will go to the root directory this slash is the root directory and the, here i execute the ls command i can show you the sub directories which are present there so these directories are there this is known as the linux file system tree and this is the directory this root directory which is responsible for the home directory of the root user account before i proceed further let me give you the detailed information about the linux file system tree first but before that let me tell you one more thing actually there are three roots present in linux there are three types of roots what are those the first root is the root user root user is the admin user or the super user or the god of the linux operating system the second root is the root directory which is represented by this slash and the third root is the root home directory which is represented by slash root so there are three types of root present in linux first root is the root user this is the root user it is the admin user or the super user second root is the root directory which is the parent directory of all the directories if i compare it with windows it it is just like the c drive in the c drive we can find all the files and directories which are present there for the windows operating system same in case of linux everything is there inside this slash this slash is the root directory or the parent directory of all the directories and third root is the root home directory root home directory is slash root this slash root means it is the home directory of the root user where he can keep his files now let me go to the slash or the parent directory or the root directory cd means change directory i'm going on the top level directory the parent directory of all the directories if i execute the ls command here i can list all the files and directories which are present here let me long list them so these are the directories which are showing up in the blue color so these are the sub directories which are present under the root directory or if you want you can also execute the tree command it will show you the entire file system tree like this so this root is at the top it is just like the universe of the linux operating system everything is inside this now let me give you the brief idea about these directories which are present in the slash or the parent directory 
there you can find multiple directories like you can find here afs boot etc lib media opt each one is used for the different purpose there are few directories which are common in almost all linux flavors like you can find their boot which contains the booting files you can find etc there it contains the configuration files you can find lib and lib64 these are for the libraries lib contains the 32 bit libraries lib64 contains the 64 bit uh, libraries media is for the removable storage and the pen drive or the i uh, the disk drive which you attach to your machine so that gets mounted on media opt is the optional directory where you can install the applications root is the home directory of the root user asbin is the system binary directory where it contains the system binary files actually binary files are the files which are responsible for the execution of the commands if the binary file is not present you cannot execute the command so system binary contains uh, the binary files and the binary files are for the execution of the commands and these binaries are generally executed by the admin user so these are the system binaries sys is there which uh, which we can use for different purposes usr is there read only uh, bin is there it contains the binary files which are executed by the normal user accounts dev is there for the devices like it is for the hardware it shows us the entire hardware in form of files so under this directory we can find different type of files which are responsible for the hardware home contains the home directory for the normal user mnt we can use to mount uh, some uh, storage or uh, mount any disk on our system so that we can access the data proc contains the files which are updated by the kernel so it contains the process related files run we can use uh, to uh, mount the removable storage srv acts as the service directory it contains the data which is infrequently used temp contains the temporary files so it is accessible by everyone in the system and sticky bit is set on this directory i will talk about it in the upcoming sessions and where contains the logs means variable files which are generally growing in size so each directory has its own significance in linux and these directories contains different type of files so basically these are for the segregation purpose like each directory will have a different type of collection of files like inside the where directory you will find the logs uh, inside the asbin you will find the system binaries inside the lib64 you will find 64 bit library files so these files are very important we will cover it in the upcoming sessions in detail we will talk about each and every directory and the files which are present over there so you don't need to worry about these directories or the files which are present under these directories now let me come back to the topic so i was telling you the pwd command pwd, uh, PWD command is used to print the present working directory in the system with the help of this command we can check in which location we are currently working then comes the cd command cd command we use to change the directory suppose currently we are working in the root home directory and i want to switch from this directory to slash opt so i will write here cd cd means change directory and i can mention the path cd slash opt now i will jump to opt directory again execute the pwd command it will show you the location as slash opt so pwd prints the present working directory and cd we use to change the directory now if i want to go back to my home directory i can either mention cd only cd will allow me to directly jump to my home directory no matter where i am currently working it will directly allow me to switch to my home directory 
or i can also mention the tilt sign after the cd command it will also allow me to go back to my home directory if i am using the normal user account i will go back to my normal user home directory or if i am using the root user account i will go back to my root user home directory to go back to my home directory either i can mention cd only or i, I can mention cd tilt now let me go back to the opt directory again i'm currently working in the opt directory opt directory is actually under the slash directory which is the parent directory of all the directories if i want to go one step backwards like i want to go to the parent of this opt directory i can mention here cd dot dot cd dot dot means i want to go back to the parent directory of this directory where currently i'm working so it will allow me to go back to the parent directory so cd dot dot we can use to switch one step backwards <coughs> let me go back to the opt directory again if i will mention here cd dot so i will remain there in the same directory so dot represents the current directory and double dot represents the parent directory always keep in mind this dot represents the current directory where you are working and double dot represents the parent directory of this directory where you are working let me go to some other location like i want to go to slash where slash log so this log directory is the child directory of the where directory so where is the parent and log is the child and currently i am working in the child directory which is the slash where slash log if i want to go back to the where directory or the parent directory of this directory i can mention here cd dot dot cd dot dot will allow me to go back to the parent of the directory where i was working earlier got it now i want to go back to the child directory again i want to go to the where log again either i can mention the complete path like this slash where slash log or i can mention here cd hyphen cd hyphen means it will take me back to that location where i was working in the previous command so this hyphen can be used to switch back to that location where you were working in the last command or in the previous command always keep in mind this hyphen will allow you to switch back to that location where you were working earlier now there is a difference i will tell you the difference between the absolute path and the relative path absolute path and relative path what is the actual meaning between these two I'm currently working under slash where slash log directory and I want to go back to my home directory what can I do I can mention here cd slash root so this slash root is the absolute path the absolute path will always start from the parent directory that is slash and you will actually mention the entire path or the complete path so this is the absolute path now let me go back to the where log now i am again working in the where log and this time again i want to go back to my home directory from here what can i do i can mention here cd tilt so this tilt is representing my home directory but this time i have not mentioned the complete path or the absolute path so 
it means it is behaving like the relative path let me give you one more example i want to list the files which are present in slash where slash log so what can i do i can mention ls ls is the command to list the files and after that i can mention the absolute path this is the absolute path slash where slash log or the complete path starting from the slash and here i can list the files and directories which are present in the slash where slash log there is one more method of doing this i will go to slash where slash log and i can execute ls this time i am not mentioning the path because i am already in the same location and this time also i will get the same results here i have not mentioned the absolute path so this is the difference or what can i do let me go to the parent directory and here i can mention ls log so this ls log is the absolute uh, is the relative path or i can mention the absolute path as well either i can execute the command like this to list the files which are there in the where log so this is the absolute path or i can mention the relative path also ls log will also give you the same result so this log which i mentioned after the ls command this is the relative path and this slash where slash log is the absolute path this is the difference however the results are same the re relative path result depends on the location where you are working while the absolute path will always work and give you the actual results no matter where you are working in the system you can directly execute the command by mentioning the absolute path and that is a better practice to avoid the errors now i will tell you the path completion uh linux provide you the facility of auto path completion auto path completion means you don't need to mention the entire string or the command that you want to execute auto path completion is the facility provided by linux where you can use the tab key it will automatically show you the suggestions how suppose i want to execute the pass wd command so i will mention here pass wd like this but if i want to go with the auto path completion i can write here p a and i can mention the tab key so once i press the tab key it will automatically suggest me the options or the commands which are available if i will write here p a s s and press the tab key it will automatically complete the command so it will keep matching with the available options and you can accordingly use it you don't need to type the entire command or the string on the terminal in order to execute the commands in linux there is the facility of auto auto path completion suppose i want to open the etc group file using the cat command so i can write here cat etc i can mention here et and i will press the tab key it will automatically complete the path after that i will mention here gr and i can press the tab key so it will automatically complete the path like this and i can open the file same for the other commands like i want to go to the var log i can mention here cd slash var i will write here va i will mention the tab key i will press the tab key i will mention here l and press the tab key it will automatically complete the path or let me show you one with one more example mm, let us suppose i want to open the sshd underscore config file i will write here slash e press the tab key it will automatically complete the path for etc then i will write here ss i will press the tab key like this then sshd underscore and i will press the tab key it will automatically complete the path for sshd underscore config and i can open the file so you can use the tab key 
if you want to use the auto path completion facility in Linux. Now I will talk about the ls command. ls command is very important because with the help of the ls command we can list the files. It is used for listing. Listing means if you will execute a com execute the ls command on the directory it will show you what are the contents of the directory. Let me show you if I will write here ls and press enter it will show me the files or directories which are present in the home directory of the root user or if I want to list the contents of any other directory like I want to check what are the contents of the etc directory I can mention here ls etc so it will print the directories and file names on the terminal which are present in the etc directory. Suppose you are new to ls command and you don't have any idea about it. You don't know the options that you can use with the ls command. What can you do? You can run the man command there for the ls. You can open the manual simply. So this is used to list the directory contents and these are the options. You can use hyphen a to list all type of files hyphen a for almost all hyphen b you can use to escape hyphen capital hyphen c capital c you can use so there are multiple options hyphen d you can use for the directory multiple options are available here with this command that you can use uh, let me use few of these options suppose i want to list all the files including hidden files in my home directory i can mention here ls hyphen a a means all and i want to list them in long listing format for the long listing i can mention here hyphen l i can execute the command like this or i can execute the command like this so as i mentioned earlier the correct syntax of running a command in linux is first you mention the command name after that you will mention here hyphen and then the option and after that you can mention the object name here we are not mentioning any object name so by default the operation will be performed on the current working directory current working directory means the root directory where we are currently working like this ls means list hyphen a means all files and this l represents the long listing format long listing means it will show you all the details about these files and directories if we will have a look at these two directories here dot and double dot why they are present and you will find these directories everywhere everywhere they are present in linux so what is the role of these two as i mentioned earlier double dot represents the parent directory and dot represents the current directory so this is for the operating system how the operating system will understand who is the parent of this directory who is the child of this directory that is done with the help of these two so these are for the parent child this is the child this is the parent and you will find these two directories everywhere in each and every directory if you will simply run ls a without long listing format it will show you the hidden files but it will not list them in long listing format how will you identify whether the file is hidden or not if a dot is mentioned before the name of the file it means this file is a hidden file if you will simply execute the ls command you will find only one file here or you you execute the ls hyphen l you will only find a single file whose name is anaconda hyphen ks dot cfg this is the kickstart installation file so only one file is here actually this is not the hidden file but if you want to list all the hidden files as well you can mention here a after ls hyphen l and it will show you all the hidden files and directories which are present in this location and how will you identify whether the directory or file is hidden or not there will be a dot present before the name suppose if you want to hide a normal file like uh, I want to create a file Vikas Nara LL can also be used it is 
similar to ls l so this vikas nara is a file which i just created now and i want to hide this file how can i hide that i can simply rename it i will put a dot before the name and this time i won't be able to list it but if i will list it using ls hyphen al this time it will be visible okay let's proceed further you can also list the files based on the human readable format you want if you want to see the details in human readable format like what will be the size of the file in human readable format you can easily do that if you simply run the ls hyphen l command what it does it shows the size of the file like this but if you want to see this information in human readable format human readable format means in kb mb gb tb you can simply mention here h h means human readable option this time the size of the file will get displayed in kb mb gb like that got it now i will tell you how can you create the directories to create the directories you can execute the mkdir command make directory make directory means you want to create the directory and you can execute the mkdir command for that let me show you i want to create a directory here so i will execute the mkdir command and i will mention the directory name as test dir now let me verify whether the directory is created or not i will execute ls hyphen l so you can find the test dir directory and this is showing up in the blue color it means it is the directory and if you will see the permissions here you will find a d written before the permissions it represents that this is a directory while hyphen represents a file mkdir command can be used to create the directories let me go on the vikas nara account and let me show you if i execute the ls command you can see these directories desktop downloads pictures templates now let me create one more directory here mkdir and let me mention the name as new dir i just created a directory with the name as new dir let me verify the same from the gui also i will go on the gui let me log in from the vikas nara user let me show you i think you can see this screen <coughs> i will go to the other locations computer i will go to the home directory of vikas nara user this is the directory new dir which i created from the command line interface now i am going to remove it to remove the directory you can mention rm dir but the condition is directory should be empty you can only remove the empty directories by running the rm dir command after rmdir you are supposed to mention the name of the directory that you want to remove i will write here rmdir new dir so it will remove the directory let's verify the same from the gui now you will not find the new dir directory here it is gone let me create the directory again from the command line interface mkdir test let's verify it from the gui you can find test here now let me verify it from the command line interface test directory is here let's delete it from the gui it is deleted 
so gui we are using here for the validation purpose if you want to create the directories in parent child structure if you want to create a directory which contains sub directories you can easily do that you can execute the mkdir command with option hyphen p p means parent child structure and here you can mention the parent child hierarchy and let me write here test 1 under test 1 i want to create test 2 under it i want to contain uh, i want to create test 3 so i created three directories in one go this test 1 is the parent of test 2 test 2 is the parent of test 3 and we created this directory tree in one command with the help of mkdir hyphen p let's verify it from the gui you can see this test one is there if i will go to this test one i will find test two if i will go to test two i will find test three there so hyphen p option is used for the parent child structure Now I will give you the exercise. I will show you the PDF. Give me a minute. RMDIR command is used to remove the empty directories only. If there is some data, you cannot delete the directory. Let me show you. This test one contains test two. Let me show you if I go to test 1 and list the contents, I can find test 2 there. Let me go back to my home directory and let me show you this test 1. Suppose I want to remove this test 1. If I execute rmdir test 1, it will give an error. Fail to remove test 1. Directory is not empty. So, you cannot directly remove the directory by running the rmdir command either you have to use some other command which i will discuss in the upcoming sessions or you need to delete the data from this directory first well, let's go to test one and check the data test two is there let me remove the test two it will not allow us to remove test two because under test two we have test three let me go to test 2. Test 3 is there. And let me remove test 3 first. We have to move in the reverse order. Test 3 is removed. Now we will go back to test 1. Test 2 is there. Now we can remove test 2. Now we can go back to the parent directory, which is the home directory. And now we can execute the RMDIR command for the test 1. So in this way, we have to first delete the child, then we can delete the parent by running the RMDIR command. Now I will give you the practice exercise which you are requested to practice at your own, in your own virtual machine. Let me show you. There are 17 questions which you need to practice at your own. You have to display your current directory on the terminal. How will you do that? You can execute the PWD, uh, PWD command. So I have provided the solutions also. But you are requested to do it at your own without checking the solution. Read the question. Try to perform it on your machine. If you are not getting it, then you can go through the solution. Second question is change to the OPT directory. Then third question is now you uh, change to the home directory using only three key presses. Three key presses means you need to press the three keys only. 
so you can use cd and enter so i have provided the solutions also you can go through it i will provide you the pdf on the google drive you can practice these questions at your own try to solve all the questions these are very easy if you stuck somewhere you can go through the solution so that's it from my side for today's session now the floor is open for you 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 guys can ask the questions but one by one i will read the names and you will unmute, unmute your microphone and you can ask the questions if you have any doubts you can ask me so i'll start with mr aman aman omed please unmute and you can ask your queries if you have any mm, yes sir i for the moment i don't have any everything is so clear so thank you so much that's I, great that is ask question thank you thank you so much yes next is mr mohammed let me check the complete name mm. <coughs> yes yes mohammed go go ahead yeah, yes uh, regarding this one question about the bash right yes in bash prime auto auto completion part will work another normal user can work on auto completion bash will, bash provides you the facility of auto path completion for, for all the users yeah not not normal user right no no it allows you the facility of auto path completion it depends okay. it it depends in which mode you made the installation if you did it in the minimal mode it might not allow you but if you did it with server with server with gui it will allow you actually it that normal and another one uh, bash is there na cell we have given uh, that uh, bash some kind of sh ch ch uh, ch and sh we have given the command no, no, list of uh, shell scripting yeah. in other shell scripting can work that uh, simultaneously no, no, no. auto computation no 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 shell scripting is a different thing shell scripting is programming yeah. we are not yeah. concerned about the programming at this stage we are talking about the shells shell is different shell scripting is different shell scripting means you are writing a program shell means it is the environment which is loaded on the terminal hello ashfaq one minute one minute oh hello sir what is the difference between shell and bash i will cover the differences don't worry we will take the shells in the upcoming sessions you don't need to worry about uh, let me tell you if you did the installation in the minimal mode it may not allow you for the auto path completion but if you have done the installation as i mentioned as i shown with server with gui it will allow you you don't need to worry about it okay yes next is davesh you can ask your queries davesh yes sir i can hear you sir today i have no queries sir thank you so much yes zo you can ask your queries if you have any uh, hello sir can you hear me yes i can hear you please go ahead I've got a couple of questions um, uh, why are we using this um, the relative path versus the absolute path like uh, what is the relevance of these two are they they really important concepts or can we just use one of the paths we can use and you are talking about the auto path, uh, the absolute path and path and the relative path yes you can use any one of them these are not important if you are an expert or if you have sufficient experience there is no relevance but as a beginner you should have the idea what are the differences between these two because in the beginning we are not aware uh, whether we are running the command with absolute path or with the relative path and because of that we make mistakes so that's why it is important for a beginner to differentiate the both that's why i have shown the both on the screen and uh, with the examples uh so i have uh, so another question that the hindi list that you uh, gave us earlier is it more comprehensive than the than this course no or the both will be same no it is not like that this course is the latest one and we are going to cover up everything on rhl 9 that that hindi playlist was started on rhl 8 and later on we covered the things that were they are in the rhl 9 so both are good but this will only focus on rhl 9 and here we will cover all the topics which are important for the exam 
you can say it is a point it is it is directly uh, a training which is based on the exam here you can cover all the topics that training which i completed in hindi that training covers the additional things also like how can you create the rpm package which has no relevance with the rhcs exam so a lot of additional topics are added there in that particular playlist those are not important for the uh, red hat system administrator exam but in this training we will only focus on the topics which which are asked in the exam that's the difference yes. Also, sir, why are you using the uh, remote login from the um, software? Like, why are you not working directly onto the bad virtual machine? Like, is this the standard practice uh, in the exam as well? Yes, it is the standard practice in the exam. You are supposed to log in through SSH only. And in case if you are using, uh, sub, in our case, we are using the local machine. Uh, there are scenarios where you you don't have the access to the local machine your machine is somewhere else like it may be on the cloud or it may be running somewhere else so at that particular moment how will you login into machine you will only use ssh that's why i'm using ssh here and in the exam also you are supposed to login in the machine through ssh only so the access to the session 2 folder like i'm only seeing session 1 is it like you going to give the access after each class everybody I, i have already shared the link of the playlist you can simply click the playlist link uh, from the same account which you used for the registration you will automatically get the access on your mail you can automatically watch the video okay thank you sir my question okay next is derek any questions Uh, yes, I have two questions. Yes, go ahead. My my first question: I used um, VMware to um, um, to make two uh, virtual Red Hat virtual machines. But as I'm making it, when you pick the OS family and then the Linux type, only Red Hat eight is available. And there's a message saying that oh, there's something incompatible with um, because I'm using Red Hat nine, but I picked Red Hat eight in VMware. Uh, which version of VMware you are using? Oh, uh, it must be an old, a old version. You are not supposed to use the old version. Go for the oh. VMware Workstation 17 Pro. Okay. Okay, and and then my my next question is how important is the man um, command when it comes to the uh, the exam? It is not important at all for the exam, but okay, it is important. for the beginners or for those people who are not very familiar with linux okay okay in exam you will not find any question related to man but it will definitely help you in case suppose uh, you forgot the option that you want to use with the command so you can uh, simply go through the manual and you can check what are the options available and you can get the help from the manual it is for that purpose thank you thank you nirav yes go ahead Nirav Chauhan. Nirav, are you there? Okay. What is the difference between SU and sudo? I will cover it. Don't worry. Sudo means super user do, and SU means switch user. Both are different things. I will cover it in the user management. Don't worry about it. su i used here to switch in the account of the user uh, the root user su means switch user and this hyphen represents that i i want to completely switch in the account of the root user i'm not going to behave just like the root user i'm going to use the entire environment of the root user so i mentioned hyphen after su uh, that thing i will cover in the user management section so don't worry about it at this stage okay next mr deepak you can ask the queries if you have any deepak uh, thank you sir uh, sir my question is related to uh, today session is clear my question is related to this uh, vmware workstation uh, i was able to install everything as per your uh, directions only one problem comes to me might be you know that you know sometime what happen periodically like for example after one hour or two hour It, it disconnects might be the network adapter and i have to restart it so is there some settings i can do at the vmware side or 
Do you have an idea where I can? Uh... Uh, are you using laptop? Yeah, I'm using a laptop. Okay. Yes. Make sure uh, that power settings are not affecting the network uh, settings. Power plan settings. Ah, okay. So, ah, okay. So it should be, or if on the charging point, it should be fine, right? If I yes, yes. It yes. Wire, then... Use it on the uh, adapter. Okay. Use it on that. Okay. Okay. Fine, sir. Nothing else. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yes. Next. Radhesham, you can ask your questions. Uh, suppose sir, like uh, we know that there are different type of uh, shell are there, right? Suppose in a KSSL, if I started uh, copying a very uh, huge uh, file size, and uh, in between I change my cell, so that uh, process will get disconnect, or that will continue in the next shell bash also. That we will cover when we will go on the shells. You don't need to worry about it at this time okay. because it will create a lot of confusion with others actually it depends what how you how you exit from the cell whether you want to keep it running at the backend or you you are killing the process which is running there it depends how you switch from the cell if you want that the session should be running at the backend you can put it in the background and then you can change the shell okay and if you will simply exit from there it may happen that your ongoing process die and it just stops working okay what? thank you sir. okay next question is from mr alok do you have any questions mr ajay Mr. Amol, those who want to ask the questions, they can raise the hands. Yes, Rajesh, please go ahead. Sir, first of all, we want to run, run or go to any directory after that, B U C D. After that, I take, I take space. Then you slice. It's my mistake. I'm yeah. Not, yes. I'm not getting you. Uh, what is the question? Sir. Hindi me puchlo. Mujhe samajh mein nahi aaya kya 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 na chaare ho. Sir, pehle mai kisi direct director ke andar jana jana chahte hain. To pehle CD ke baad space dete hain. Tab chale CD id karte hain pehli baar. Ji 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 correct. इसके बाद फिर कोई डायरेक्टर देते हैं तब तो इसके बाद आप स्लैश यूज इसके बाद आप स्पेस नहीं यूज करना पड़ेगा एक बारी में के बाद आप एक बारी में एक ही लोकेशन में तो जाओगे टीएमपी में चले गए जी अब बताओ कहां जाना है जी जी नहीं ये ये स्पेस के बाद जो स्लैश यूज करते थे इसी को थोड़ा डाउट था अगर आप ओके सर अगर आप अगर आप बिना स्पेस के चला दोगे तो ये कमांड समझ में नहीं आएगी इसको ये क्या करता है मैच करता है सीडी को समझता है सीडी के बाद स्पेस देना जरूरी है अगर सीडी के बाद लिख दोगे तो इसको एक कमांड के रूप में समझेगा ये मैंने क्या बताया था क्या सिंटेक्स क्या है व्हाट इज द करेक्ट सिंटेक्स पहले आप कमांड मेंशन करते हैं फिर स्पेस देते हैं फिर हाइपन लगाते हैं फिर ऑप्शन मैंशन करते हैं और फिर जो ऑब्जेक्ट है वो मैंशन करते हैं ये होता है सिंटेक्स तो अगर आप यहाँ सी लिख रहे हैं इट मीन्स सी एक कमांड है ये कैसे पता चलेगा जब उसके बाद आप स्पेस दे देंगे अगर आप सी के बाद पाथ लिख देंगे तो वो उसको एक कमांड समझेगा ना कि ऑब्जेक्ट तो कमांड और ऑब्जेक्ट के बीच में स्पेस होना जरूरी है ये सिंटेक्स है ठीक है जी सर ठीक है सर थैंक यू किसी और को पूछना है कोई क्वेश्चन कोई डाउट हो आज के सेशन से रिलेटेड पिछले सेशन से रिलेटेड हैंड रेज कर सकते हैं आप अगर आपको कोई क्वेश्चन पूछने हैं तो हाँ जी जो जी बताइए यू कैन आस्क योर करीज सर वो सेशन वन की फाइल्स दिख रही है आई कॉन्ट सी दिन सेशन टू फाइल्स एक मिनट मैंने ऑलरेडी बताया ना आपको आप जो है व्हाट्सएप खोलिए ओपन योर व्हाट्सएप गो टू द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ दिस ग्रुप 
description. Description. There are three things. Today's meeting link. This is the recurring meeting. Link will remain the same for the entire training. There is the study material link from where you can directly access the study material. And third is the video playlist. If you will click on this video playlist link, you will automatically see the last session recordings there. But make sure that you are you are logged in in the YouTube account from the same email ID, which you provided to us at the time of registration. Uh, yes, sir. When I when I click that uh, the second link, which is study material, and when I go into that folder of my Google Drive, it only shows me the session one. Which I already shared on the group as well. What I'm seeing in my folder. So session. Ah, अभी session two का डाला नहीं है ना भैया. अभी session खत्म तो होने दो. Ah, okay, sir. Session खत्म session खत्म हो जाएगा तभी तो डालूँगा. अभी तो मेरे पास है वो. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, Alok. Please go ahead. यस आलोक जी क्वेश्चन पूछिए कैन यू हेयर मी आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है नो क्वेश्चन थैंक यू किसी को कुछ और पूछना है हैंड रेज कर दीजिए क्योंकि वो रिकॉर्डिंग हो रही है उसमें बेकार में टाइम वेस्ट होगा बाद में अगर कोई देखेगा तो आप आपको पूछना है तो जिस जिसको क्वेश्चंस पूछने हैं अपने हैंड रेज कर लीजिए दो जो वॉन्ट टू आस्क दी क्वेश्चन दे कैन प्लीज रेज दियर हैंड्स नो क्वेश्चन ओके थैंक यू तो आज के सेशन में इतना ही दैट्स इट फॉर टूडे सेशन नाउ वी विल मीट ऑन द अपकमिंग सैटरडे एट एट पी एम थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग दी सेशन See you in the next session bye bye good night take care everyone thank you so much thank you sir